What up, Woodies? Welcome back to another episode of Vaporwood. Kennard here, and today, coming at you with another hardware review, we're taking a look at the Wizmec and J-Bow Noisy Cricket. What up, YouTube? What up, this is Vaporwood? All right, folks, welcome back to another episode of Paperwood. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We are talking about the Noisy Cricket by Wismec in j -Bo, a little series mechanical box mod that packs one hell of a punch. Before we get to know this thing a little bit better, let's talk about the juice I'm going to be using today. The e-liquid I'm going to be using today is New Drips on the Block. And New Drips on the Block is brought to you by the people that brought you the Detroit Rock Candy e-liquid line. This is another candy themed e-liquid line. This one's going after the Dum Dum Suckers. There's an orange Dum Dum, a green apple, and a strawberry Dum Dum Sucker. Today I am using the flavor called Steep by Steep, which is the orange Dum Dum Sucker. I enjoy that one quite a bit. Um, they are running $19.99 to 30 mil. You can check them out on DetroitRockCandy.com. All right, guys, let's get right to it. Let's go down. Let's get up close. Let's get up in them guts of the noisy cricket. All right, guys, here we are up close with the noisy cricket by Jabo and Wizmec. Real quick, let's just hit some of the specs of the device. It is a series mechanical mod, unregulated. Solid aluminum alloy construction, has a simple style firing button, compact design, six ventilation holes, and utilizes two 18650 batteries, and it is recommended you use a married pair of 30 amp batteries. All right, let's let you check it out real quick. It's real simple, guys. It's just a simple design. This one does have a black powder coat. The powder coat has held up pretty well, you will see here and there some little little flecks along the edges, but for the most part, it has held up pretty well to being beaten and kicked around and all that good stuff. There's the bottom of the device. You can see in there it says J-Bo. You got two little screws to take this bottom plate off, and you got six holes for battery venting. Here's your top with your 510 hybrid connector and your button. That's pretty much it, guys. When you want to change your batteries, you just take this off. I like to use my ceramic tip tweezers. Stick them in the two little holes here and just spin that right out. And then your button, you can just turn by hand or you can use the end of your tweezers or a flathead screwdriver or a coin, whatever you have. So here's the button. It does say j and Wizmec on there. You, you can see the slot in mine is a little chewed up from being taken off the device and put back on many, many times. So that is something to be aware of. This plastic is, this plastic for the button is kind of weak, so you will... You will chew that up a bit if you're not careful. And there's your switch. Pretty much nothing to it. You can use an Allen key to loosen that up and take this switch apart if you want to. Well, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's your switch. So that plate comes down, touches your battery, makes connection, and then you have vapor. And just so you can't say I didn't show you, there is the hybrid disc. The side that says Wismec will be the side that touches the bottom of your RDA. This side here, with that coating around the outside, will be the side that touches your battery. We'll go ahead and pop this bottom plate out just so you guys can see what's going on in here. It's just the two screws, very simple, Phillips head screws. All right, and then you just pop this section out. You can use a screwdriver and just press it out. And there you have it guys, there's that bottom plate, a simple little bottom plate, it's got a ridge in there which this contact will rest on. When you press your button down, it pushes down on the battery on one of the sides, whatever side your button's on, which pushes this little contact which lifts the other battery to touch your RDA and complete the circuit. Pretty simple guys, not much to it. Alright guys, let's get this thing put back together. You're going to take your contact section. Put the contacts facing down and just drop them in place. It sits right in the hole. Then you'll take your bottom plate. Just set that right on there. You can press it down, pop it in place, but the screws will pull it down when you put the screws in there. Then you put your screws back in. Make sure everything's nice and tight. Now on to batteries, guys. The batteries I'm using in the Noisy Cricket 
are these Pegasus Vapor Academy batteries right here. Now, if you haven't heard of him, definitely check him out. Pegasus Vapor Academy on YouTube. Also, PegasusVaporAcademy.com. He's, if you don't already know, he Pegasus is the, the battery guy. He does battery testing and things of that nature. And what he does is he tests batteries for the correct specs. Because there are a lot of batteries out there where the specs are highly exaggerated. You know, 40 amp batteries, 60 amp batteries that are really only 20 amp batteries, 15 amp batteries. You know, you know the whole E-Fest ordeal, all that good stuff. So what he's trying to do is to put out batteries with the correct information on them, with true stats, and to take out all the guesswork for any average vapor or shop worker that just doesn't have all the knowledge that they really need. They're great batteries. They are rewraps. Pegasus is guaranteeing a high-grade battery, all-the-time high-grade battery, with the correct specs on it. As you can see here, it shows it's an 18650, 3.6 volt, 1500 mAh. And let me come in a little closer. This battery is a very low density, ultra high discharge, 30 amp battery. This is his type E battery. This is what I'm using in uh, a lot of mech mods and stuff like that. Basically, it's a, it's a LG um, oh, HB6 is what it is. And see, if you go down a little bit further around the side of the battery, it says recommended usage. Regulated devices of 150 to 225 watts in series or for analog single use, which is like your tube mods. You do a 0.15 resistance to a 0.12 or for analog parallel use, so unregulated parallel box, you can build 0.07 to 0.06 with these batteries. So he's putting everything on there for you so you know, you know, you can pick the right battery for you based on your based on the way you vape. And what these stats are doing is they're just trying to make sure you get the full potential out of your battery. So I really like what he's doing. I think it's a really good thing. Definitely check these out, PegasusVaporAcademy.com. There will be a link down in the description down below that will take you right to it. You can check them out. He has several different types of batteries for many different vaping occasions. These are just the ones that I use in my Noisy Cricket or in my Mech Mods, the Type E battery, the Ultra High Discharge. They have very low milliamp hour, but they are super high discharge to get that great really hard hit now i have another set here these are the type d battery these are still great for mech mods but as you can see it's a low density it's just a high discharge and is a 25 amp battery but it has 2000 ma versus the very low density battery that was just at 1500 milliamp hour so both great for mechs just different different batteries good for different things as you can see this is good for regulated devices of 70 to 150 watts in series Analog single 0.19 to 0.15. Analog parallel 0.19 to 0.07. So he has different batteries for every occasion out there. Definitely check out PegasusVaporAcademy.com. And also check out his YouTube channel. He's got some really good stuff over there. Lots of information. Battery safety. Everything you need to know. Definitely check it out. Pegasus Vapor Academy. When you're ready to use your noisy cricket, you go ahead and plop your batteries in. One battery with the positive facing up. One battery with the positive facing down, and you can see as it, it moved in there. That's what's going to happen when you push your button. This battery, battery on this side raises and touches your RDA, your 510 connection, completes the circuit, and then you have vapor. So I'm going ahead and screw my button on. The button always goes on the negative side of your battery. I screw my button on first just because this is a hair trigger, and it doesn't have much throw to it. And I have had several times... When I put my RDA on first and I go to tighten this button down, it fires and just burns my cotton up. So I put my button on first. Some people say not to. I go ahead and put my button on first. I don't know. Maybe I like to live dangerously. Then you will take your hybrid disc, Wismex side facing the RDA, screw it to your RDA. Make sure your 510 pin is protruding. So you don't have any shorts this is protruding this isn't protruding a ton but i have been using it without any problems this is probably as low as i would go if you have anything shorter than that 510 do not use it on a hybrid device once again this is the double vision it just has a trinity glass replacement cap on there definitely check them out there will be a link in the description down below trinity glass so now we just go ahead and screw the rda on the positive side Screw it down until it stops. And hit the button. Vapors, guys. One thing to be careful of, depending on how your RDA is, you see where that airflow is at? 
that is right next to that button. When you hit that button, your finger is right here next to the airflow. So be very careful of hot juice and hot vapor coming out of the airflow. It's very dangerous and the threat is very real. Also one thing to keep in mind is the size of your RDA. You can see here with the Trinity glass cap on there is basically touching the button. So you're not going to be able to put anything on here much bigger than a 22 millimeter RDA guys. Just something to keep in mind. But alright guys, that's the up close for the Noisy Cricket by Wizmec and j -Bo. Before we go back out and do the pros and cons and all that good stuff, I'm going to show you a real quick and easy series build that's going to give you some great flavor and produce some good vapor for you. And like I said, it's a quick and easy build to do as long as you have the tools. I mean, really you can do this without a drill, but we are going to need a drill for this. I am going to do a twisted 26 gauge build and show you how to do that real quick. So let me get all the tools together and I'm sure there will be some kind of fade out or something right here and we'll get on with that build all right guys the tools you are going to need for this build okay got my little coil master kit here this is a very handy thing to have there will be a link in the description down below where you can find one of these this coil master kit is pretty sweet guys it's got basically everything you need in it and i know everybody's seen these coil master kits it's nothing new but it is a coil master kit. Like I said, link down below in the description. Come with screwdrivers, scissors, pliers, tweezers, ohm reader, uh, the coil master wrapper tool, all kinds of stuff, guys. So definitely check that out. But the tools you're going to need for today's job, you're definitely going to need some pliers. You're going to need some wire cutters. You are going to need something to wrap around. And today we will be using this three millimeter bit from the coil master kit. You also need some ceramic tip tweezers for pinching and strumming your coils. These also came out of the Coil Master Kit. You also need some 26 gauge canthal. I got mine from Lightning Vase, but any 26 gauge canthal will do. You can do this with other wire as well, but today I will be using canthal. And you will also need a drill. Alright, so first we're going to need about 3 foot of canthal. Now I'm just going to bend the end of my canthal. This is the end I'm going to insert into the chuck of my drill to straighten this wire. If you have not seen my video on straightening wire, go back to the Coil Building 101 video and I show exactly what I'm doing there. Basically all you do is you put this in the drill, you hold the other end with your pliers, apply pressure and spin the drill for oh about 5 seconds and straighten the wire out. Now we have a nice straight piece of canthal. We're going to go ahead and fold that in half. Just like so. Get your ends even here. Now I just run my fingers along until I get to here and I pinch it. Just pinch it. Try to get those wires close together. It doesn't have to be perfect. But you want those wires parallel. You can also pinch this with a pair of pliers, but it's the 26 gauge is really easy to bend. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my other ends of my wire, and just like before, I'm going to bend them at 90 degree angles at the ends, just to give the drill chuck something to hold on to. We'll insert these in the chuck of the drill. Now what you want to do is, is you just put your pliers in the looped end of the canthal. Then we will apply tension and spin the drill and start twisting these wires up. Remember to hold tension with your hand that's in the pliers. You want to keep pressure so that this wire doesn't kink up. There you go. I just keep going until it snaps because I like my twist to be nice and tight. And I'll get some focus for you. 
So here is the wire up close once it is nice and twisted. And this is what we are going to wrap our coil with. Pretty simple, guys. All right, guys, so now we have our three millimeter bit. We are going to do 10 wraps on this three millimeter bit. All right, so 10 wraps on the three millimeter bit. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now this wire is going to be very springy, so definitely come around an extra wrap and pull on it because it's going to want to spring back on you. So you just want to go ahead and pull it tight and you'll be able to get all that springiness out of it. But this is a very springy wire when you do it. That's just the nature of a twisted wire. Okay, so we have one coil all set, ready to go. We're going to wrap one more. Same as before, 10 wraps, guys. So here we go. Pull an extra one over just because it's going to spring back. And bend your leads back. We're all set, ready to start installing these coils guys now what we'll be building on today is the other deck for the double vision since it's very simple to build on the two post deck especially for series builds so we'll just build on this double vision here today one tool i didn't mention before you will need one of these precision screwdrivers this did not come in the coil master kit but i like to use these to push my coils and to get them all situated all right guys definitely take your snips snip one of your leads to be shorter than the other Makes it easier for fitting them into the post holes. And we slide our slide our leads into our post holes just like so. And for right now, I'm just going to bend them up to kind of hold this coil in place while I'm installing the other coil. Once again, snip your lead so that one lead is shorter than the other for your convenience. And install your coil. All right, now that we have both our coils installed, I know it's kind of hard to see for you guys. We're going to go ahead and tighten down these grub screws with an Allen key tool. Just get them snug because we still have a little bit of situating to do with the coils. All righty, now I'm going to go through and take my wire cutters and snip my leads as close to the posts as possible. One thing I like to do is take my screwdriver and just pull a coil down right out of the way so I can get to these leads and snip them as close to the post as possible. Now that we have our leads clipped, we're just going to go ahead and take our screwdriver, insert it into the coil, and bend those back horizontal, lift them up a bit. We want them centered. We don't want them touching the post or touching any part of the deck. And you want to make sure they align with your airflow. Do that to both sides. Pull them out, lift them up, get them all situated, try to get them as centered as possible. You want them to both be kind of the same height. Goal is to make both coils as close to identical as you can. There you guys go. Just a little up close look at the twisted coils. They look pretty neat. This is before we pinch and fire them. We are definitely going to read the resistance before we do that. Um, you need to have an ohm meter for this or some sort of regulated device that has a decent ohm meter built into it. Today I'm using the RX200. So let's see what this is reading at currently. Before we pulse and pinch and dry fire and all that good stuff, it's reading at a .42. So this is going to be well within our safety limits to use on the noisy cricket. So let's go ahead and pulse fire and pinch these coils and get them all pretty and ready to go. And I like to start low. Go low when you're pulsing your coils. You don't need a lot of power. So 30 watts or so. 
All right, so we have our ceramic tip tweezers. We're going to start pulsing these coils. I got it on 20, 28 watts right now. So we're just trying to get them glowing. We want them glowing evenly. So a low wattage will be fine. And you want to be careful because sometimes a lot of heat really quick to these coils will make them shrink. And you definitely don't want that. And you see them starting to get red. They're not even, so we're going to go ahead and pinch. Just pinch them. Give them a good strum. They're already starting to glow evenly from the inside out, which is what you want. You want an even glow from the inside out. Make sure your screws stay tight. So you want to use your, your Allen driver. Make sure those stay nice and tight. Good thing about grub screws is most of the time, most of the time they're not going to back out on you. They pretty much stay right where you leave them. Turn this up just a little bit. We'll go 50 watts. There we go. We're getting a little faster ramp up. And these are looking really good already, guys. Not too much fuss with these. If you do them nice and tight, if your twists are nice and tight and your wraps are tight. Here you go, guys. Just a little up close real quick. Oh, yeah. That's exactly what you want. Let's go ahead and throw some wicks in her and get her juiced up, guys. If you've been following my videos, you know I use this Texas Tough Sub Ohm Cotton. You can find this on uh, you can find this on eBay or on LDVapeGear.com. Just Google search Texas Tough Sub Ohm Cotton, and it will come up. Or, like I said, you can go to LDVapeGear.com. There will be a link in the description down below to LD Vape Gear as well as to the eBay store. The good prices on this stuff, and it's awesome organic cotton, guys. Got my scissors out. I'm just going to cut me a piece of, cut me a little strip here. I'm going to cut two strips. I'm going to try to make them about the same size. It does, if they're not exactly equal, it's not the end of the world, but the goal is to try to make two equal pieces. Or use one long piece and cut it in half. But for the video purposes, I use a little more cotton than I should. So we're just going to go ahead and roll this up in your hand. Make sure your hands are clean when you do this. You don't want to get all the oils and stuff from your hands onto your cotton. Twist your end to give you a nice little pointy tip to feed through the coil. Now we just pull her on through. It's nice and snug, but the cotton can still move freely. That's what you want. We'll do the same for the other side. roll it in your hands take this little bit off this might be a little much I'm just gonna take just pull a little bit off it's a little bit too much guys so we roll her up again pinch and twist the ends and feed it right through the cotton guys And if you get bunched up in there, just give it a little bit more of a twist. Make it a little more stiff. There you go. Feed her on through. Pull. You can pull from the other side, from this side as well, to make the cotton thinner. To get it through the coil easier. Like I said, you want it to be able to move freely, but you want there to be some resistance. So, then we'll go ahead and trim our ends. Not taking a whole lot off though, guys. Just a little bit here. Now, and the reason I do this is uh, Instagram builder at Born to Diet showed me this, but for these series builds, your coils heat from the inside out, right? And a lot of times you're going to get your dry hits and all that right in the middle. The middle of the coil is going to light up and it's going to burn that cotton because it's getting, it's vaporizing all that juice in the middle very quickly with these super high wattage uh, series builds. So what I do is I leave my cotton long and I make sure to leave a bed of cotton underneath my coil and make sure it's touching my coil to keep wicking juice to the bottom of the coil to help to help get rid of those dry and burnt hits, guys. So what I do is I just tuck my cotton in here and bear with me. Doing this on camera is a bit of a pain. But I tuck my cotton in here. 
up nice and tight right underneath the coil. Okay, and then I do the same with the other side, laying it on top of the cotton that's already there. And I know this looks like a lot, guys, but it really does help. I probably could have trimmed that down just a smidgen, but for the purposes of this video, I think it'll serve what I'm trying to do. Sorry, I have to spin this around a little bit so I can see. So I'm just tucking the cotton, making sure it's touching all portions of my coil and the leads to prevent hot leads as well. You should end up with something like that, guys. And we will do the same on this side. Just tuck the cotton. Tuck it in there with your screwdriver or your tweezers or whatever you have handy. Just get it all down in there, up underneath the coil. And then do the same with the other side. Tuck it under and lay it on top of the cotton that is already there. So that it is tall enough to reach the bottom of your coil. I'm going to turn this around real quick just so I can clean this up. There you go guys, you should end up with something like that. A nice bed of cotton underneath your coil, touching it. I know people say you want airflow going underneath your coil, but since I learned this little trick, I have found myself having much better vape experience doing it this way. Alright, so let's juice her up. Got some of that new drips on the block, steep by steep. This is an orange dum-dum sucker. Very good. It tastes like the orange dum-dum. If you like candy flavors, definitely check these guys out. DetroitRockCandy.com. New drips on the block. And we're juicing her up. Let me get in frame, huh? How about that? We're juicing her up. Now with this Texas Tough, at first it does not like to absorb the, absorb the liquid. It takes a little bit of play. So just get everything wet and then we'll hurry up and pulse fire and it will soak that liquid right in there and I'll try to get a good shot of it. Alright, you guys can see all that liquid just sitting on the top there. It's not absorbing. You go ahead and hit the fire button real quick. You see that all just soak in there? Pretty awesome, guys. Good old Texas Tough. So I like to just keep doing this. Um, I keep pulsing and dripping and pulsing and dripping because it helps break in this Texas Tough cotton. It does have a bit of a break-in period, and it does have a bit of a break-in taste. But if you juice and prime your coils the way I'm doing, and like I said, you pulse and draw the liquid in and pulse and draw the liquid in. You do this three or four times, you will have a great experience with this cotton. All right, I think we're ready to get around the noisy cricket. Let's get that top cap on there. Got my handy dandy vape tweezers. Alright guys, as I showed you before, you screw your plate on to your RDA, Wismec side facing the bottom of the RDA. Then we screw around to the noisy cricket. Make sure it's tight. Let's do it with this real quick. Yeah, you want to make sure that's down all the way, guys. There we go. Make sure we get some more juice on there. There you go, guys. It's a little over drip. But she is rowdy. Well, we throw the cap on it. We'll have a vape real quick. But all right, guys, there you have it. That is the ins and outs, the guts of the Noisy Cricket. That is a really quick, simple build for a series box that you can do. You can do that build for not just the Noisy Cricket, but for any other series box out there, you can go ahead and do that build. Um, 
So yeah, let's go ahead, back out, get them pros and cons, the final thoughts, and get on out of here, guys. All right, folks, there you have it. The up close, the ins and outs, the guts of the Noisy Cricket by Wismek and j -Bo. And as I've already said, guys, it's a little mod that packs a hell of a punch. It's unregulated series. Let's get right to it. Let's hit them pros and cons. First pro. First pro, guys, for me, you know how it is. Fit and finish. It's small. It's sleek. It looks good. It feels good in the hand. So they definitely get the thumbs up for the fit and finish. Second pro. Second pro, guys, is just the overall vape experience. You do get a great vape experience from this Noisy Cricket mod. Like I said, it is in series, so you need to build high, as I mentioned, in the up close. You need to build above a .3, stay above a .3. And make sure you are using only 30 amp batteries. Just be safe out there, guys. But if you're being safe and you're doing everything you're supposed to do, this thing vapes great. Con number one. First con is not being able to take the batteries out through the bottom. It does get very cumbersome having to take off the button and take off your 510 every time you want to change your batteries. So I would like to see some sort of latch system to where you could just flick open the bottom here and take the batteries out. That would be very nice. Something to think about for a future version. Kind of number two. Second kind, of guys, is definitely this button. I don't know what's up with it, but a lot of times... That's going to make a liar out of me. Sometimes it just doesn't want to fire. When I press the button directly in the center, sometimes it just does not want to fire at all. I have to hit the button kind of on the side or to an angle. I have a lot of problems with this button. It just... Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So... That's definitely a kind, guys. we got to do something about this button. All right, guys, you know what time it is. Time to get them cheesy graphics out. It's time for them. Final, Final thoughts. thoughts. Final thoughts on the Noisy Cricket by Wismek and J-Bo, guys. It is an awesome, awesome little vape with its quirks aside. Like I said, it's very high maintenance. You have to clean the threads all the time, and the button is finicky. But when it's working... Man, is it a good vape. I mean, it's a series box, so I mean, it vapes like series, it hits like a truck, but it seems to be there's, you know, there's very, very little voltage drop. Conductivity is very good in this little noisy cricket, guys, but at the same time, it is a dangerous device. If you do not know what you're doing, this, this can be a very dangerous little pipe bomb. So, if you are going to get a noisy cricket, please... Practice battery safety. Make sure you have good batteries. Make sure your wraps are good on your batteries. If your wraps aren't good, do a rewrap. You can buy wraps online fairly cheap. You get a ton of them for a couple bucks. You can do it with a lighter or a hair dryer or, or pretty much anything that's giving off a good amount of heat. Or, if you don't want to do that, nine times out of ten, your local brick and mortar vape shop will do rewraps for you for, you know, a dollar. So just make sure your battery wraps are good, guys. Take care of yourself and vape safe. So with all that being said, do I recommend the Noisy Cricket? Yes, I do. Noisy Cricket definitely gets a recommendation for any advanced vapor out there who wants a small on-the-go series box. Now, price point. E-Cigarette's got these things for $29.99. That's the other pro. That's another pro for these devices. They are fairly inexpensive. You can find them all over the web. I just happened to pick E-Cigarette because it's a reputable uh it's a reputable online dealer. I've dealt with them before. I've bought things from there before, and I've had good experiences. So, e Siggity Noisy Cricket, $29.99, guys. And it comes in a bunch of different colors. you got silver, black, red, gray, blue, and brown. So, there's plenty of colors for you to choose from. Like I said, for the advanced vapor, and it is a hybrid mod. I'm sure I mentioned it in the up close, but this is a hybrid mod. So, make sure... Make sure your RDA has a protruding 510 pin, such as the Double Vision here, or any of the comp vapes. So far, I've noticed that all the comp vapes work good on a hybrid mechanical device. So make sure that 510 pin is protruding, guys. But definitely, Noisy Cricket gets the two thumbs up. No, all right, folks, that's all I have for you tonight. If you like what you saw, be sure to give the video a like or a thumbs up down below. Share it around all your favorite social media, all that good stuff. And be sure to leave some comments down below. Let me know what you want to see on this channel. I'm trying to shake things up a bit. I'm going to be doing my format a little bit differently. I'm trying to shorten these reviews down even further. Get them even shorter, just, just quick, solid reviews without, without much of me repeating myself. Because I know I repeat myself quite a bit in these videos. Feel free, leave a comment down below in the comment section. Let me know what you think. 
and what you'd like to see. All right, guys, and that's really all I got for you. You got to see the noisy cricket. You got to get up in them guts of the noisy cricket. You got to see a nice little quick and easy series builds you can do. And you learned a little bit about battery safety, and I told you about the Pegasus Vapor Academy. Definitely check out PegasusVaporAcademy.com. He's got some great batteries over there. I really love what he's doing, taking all the guesswork out of it, making it really simple for everyone, for shop workers, for the average vapor, for people that don't really know, you know, Ohm's Law and battery safety. He's putting it all out there for you, and it's honest, honest specifications on his batteries. Something I can definitely stand behind. So definitely check out PegasusVaporAcademy.com, or check out his YouTube channel, Pegasus Vapor Academy, and check out all his different, he's got battery safety videos, he's got battery testing videos, all kinds of stuff over there, so definitely check that out, guys. I will have a link down below in the description to Pegasus Vapor Academy YouTube channel and to the website as well. Um, it is an affiliate link, so you know how those go. If you want to click that, it's going to help me out a little bit. It's a direct link for you. You don't have to click it, but I figured I'd let you know it is an affiliate link, and it is there for you to use at your convenience. There will also be links in the description down below to eSiggity.com where you can find one of these noisy crickets for yourself. There's also going to be a link down there where you can find some Texas Tough Cotton. Um, there will also be a link down there for that little coil master kit you guys saw me using. So definitely check those out. Pick some of that stuff up for yourself. You will not be disappointed. Everything down there in the description are some great products in my book. They definitely get the Vaporwood seal of approval. So, all right, guys, enough of me yapping. I'm out of here. And as always, keep chasing those clouds, my friends. Live long and vapor.